When you get in the water, try to be gentle, eh? We are in Puerto Ayora, the largest town in the Galapagos Islands. And today we are starting our expedition. I am fulfilling a personal dream. Now the Galapagos Islands are a place that I put in my bucket list when I was a little kid. Enrique Sala and a team of scientists have come to the Galapagos Islands to explore an incredible marine ecosystem. We have warm currents coming from the north, cold currents coming from the south, and then we have this deep current coming from the west, bringing cold, nutrient-rich water that makes the entire west area of the Galapagos a very productive place. The Pristine Seas team travels the world, hunting out the last wild places in the ocean, inspiring governments to set aside large marine reserves. Today, they're checking out the health of fish populations around Wolf Island. This is our first dive at Wolf Island. We are promised that this place is very sharky. So we're very excited about what we're going to see underwater. It's not long before they spot a favorite shark. I think the hammerhead was made by committee because you have this powerful, muscular body of a shark and it has one eye on each side looking like a chameleon. But the team doesn't see the massive groups that these islands are known for. We have seen hammerhead sharks, but less, way less than in a normal year. It's an El Nino year. The waters in the Pacific are warmer than usual. And the first species that are affected are the sharks. El Nino is a natural weather phenomenon that causes water temperatures to rise three to five degrees in the Pacific every few years. The Galapagos are right in its bullseye. Under normal conditions in this region, cold, nutrient-rich water rises up toward the surface, providing food for a wide variety of marine life. The process is called upwelling. But during El Nino, the thick layer of warm water does not allow normal upwelling to occur. This environmental change can disrupt the food chain, the chain of who eats whom in an ecosystem, causing fish populations to die or migrate. In this case, the sharks didn't die off. They just left for a while. The good news is that El Nino doesn't happen every year. So we have time in between these warming events for the ecosystem to recover. Next up is a dive at nearby Darwin Island. Darwin is supposed to be the jewel of the crown. It doesn't take long to see their first shark, a silky. Farther down, they see some of the important predators that were missing at Wolf Island. It was extraordinary. We saw this big tuna zooming by like giant torpedoes. Predator fish like tuna and rainbow runners fill out the food chain. They also give birth to the bait ball. Swimming closely together in tight packs, the smaller fish use strength in numbers as a defense against these predators. You could hear the noise of the tails of 200,000 fish moving at the same time. That was one of the most extraordinary sights I've ever seen underwater. Despite the impact of global warming and the naturally occurring warmth from El Nino, the waters around Darwin and Wolf are still thriving. And with the help of Enrique and the pristine seas team, these islands just became part of a new marine sanctuary, 15,000 square miles of ocean, completely off limits to fishing. It's a huge win for the Galapagos and the ocean. This place looks as pristine as it gets, lots of fish, lots of sharks. This is one of these rare places on Earth. A time machine where we can see the ocean of the past. It was magnificent.